You began on a Monday morning, or possibly Thursday afternoon. It could also have been a Wednesday, or any one of a thousand other similar days when knee-deep in dullish numbers, or perhaps geography, you looked up from your books to find Dr Simpson peeking, no, kicking as the local term went, through the open classroom door. Will we take a break from the lessons, he'd say. And you'd understand this was not interruption so much as a timely intervention. We heads could grow weary of too much learning. We hands were charged with the need to move. And we mouths, well, we mouths were made to chatter and also sing and sing and sing and also sing. Out you came from behind your desk, fizzing and buzzing like a holiday. Down the corridor you tripped, past other less fortunate classes, to the room where the instruments lived, and there descended upon the percussion. Tight, tingling triangles and grit-sharp maracas, and if you were quick, the tambourine. Even after the box had emptied, you could still be rhythm in yourself. You could click with your fingers, stump your school shoes on the floor, slap one damp hand against the other, whistle if you had the mouth for it. And even if you could not hold a note, Dr Simpson said you should still empty your lungs out and love to sing. He led the charge on a battered acoustic. He was the only music man you knew, and he could play most anything. And boys a dear, the man could sing. You opened your mouth and laugh sung along. She kept on coming round the mountain, and your bonnie was always over the ocean. And when Michael Finnegan had grown butter fat and sharply thin again, it seemed only natural to draw a deep breath and begin again at the start of the song. And in this room, where the joy was thick and running down the walls, you first began to realise that music and art and all such outpourings could not and should not be scheduled or made to measure. They would, from this point onwards, forever after, graciously interrupt all your days. (laughs) 